Hi guys. We are here today with Kay and Doug Belter and Pink, and we are going to go over the breed priorities of the English Cocker Spaniel and give you the preferred way to examine the English Cocker. So you guys, I'll let you take it from here. Okay, you're looking for a moderate dog. Okay. Nothing with extremes. Mm -hmm. And it should have roundness rather than sharpness. Sharpness is for setters, roundness is for cockers. So when you come up to the face and you look at it, you want to see a slightly flattened skull with a little bit of roundness to it, a beautiful expressive eye, like what that is. Good big teeth for the size of dog because it has to be able to pick up the bird and do the job. And you don't want those little bitty rice teeth and don't want teeth all crammed into the bottom jaw. You want a good strong jaw. Ear length. Leather should be fine. It says a fine leather, not a, not a heavy, houndy leather. Edge of the nose. Stop. When you look at an English cocker, this is going to be different from a setter. It has almost level planes from the side. Okay, so you have almost level planes with a rounded brow. Your level planes, in the standard it calls for level planes, that is from this direction, looking down on top of her. You have here and here. The muzzle width should fit with the eyes. The eyes are very important because they have to be looking straight ahead. If you've got a back skull that's flowing back or down fore face, what happens is the eyes are looking up there. If they're carrying a bird and they're looking up there, they can't see where they're going. So you look at the head, you take it, it's nice and round, you find the stop, you do the bite, it's all there. Ears come up. This forechest is very important because they have to be able to push through the brush. And when you go down, it should fill your hand all the way. You should not be going all the way through the okay. back. It should fill your hand mm -hmm. and you come down to the upper arm. The illustrated standard describes this as almost a 100 degree preferred because you'll never truly get a 90 degree. Well laid back shoulder, length of upper arm equal to the shoulder blade. Go down the leg, feel the bone. It's got to have bone to match the dog and the bone should go right from the elbow down to the foot. Mm -hmm. Nice tight foot. Nice tight in the elbows. Come down, you're going to go down, you found that. This is interesting. This is slightly more than that. Your height from ground to withers is slightly more than withers to croup. Okay. So you're getting a, a square compact dog, but your length of a dog, everybody says, well, English cockers all look a little bit long. That's because they have a big butt and they should have this four chest. So okay. that's where you get your length out mm -hmm. of. When you come down, coming back, you look down from on top while you're doing this, you have rib. This is the three things you should see when you're examining English Cocker from the top. Rib first, hips, then shoulders. Short coupled, very short coupled with good ribbing all coming all the way back. Slightly rounded croup. Everybody in American Cocker world wants a Cocker tail to come straight up like that. English Cocker slightly rounded falling in okay. with a good hammy butt Good, good thighs. Second, um, first and second thighs, very strong, well let down stifles, going down to good hocks again, nice tight feet, short hocks, tail carried off the back, tail can be carried slightly up in an excited state, which a dog show is, mm -hmm. but never directly up. So a judge shouldn't um, fault a dog if the tail's not slightly up? Well, it, you're going to, a, a carriage is, it, right. it comes off mm -hmm. and it comes off like that, and it should be carried up. An English cocker should be a merry breed, mm -hmm. expresses it mm -hmm. basically okay. with its tail. If its tail's not up and wagging, not it's not happy not and it's merry. not merry. It's not very merry. It used to be an old, <laughs> it used to be an old <laughs> saying that <laughs> with some of the older judges, no taily, no pointy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that pretty well gives Above Frank all with this breed, um, above all with this breed, it's just, it's a very moderate, it should be a very moderate breed, nothing exaggerated. They really should look the same standing as, as moving. Um, that picture really just shouldn't change when you have a correctly made dog. Okay. Um, and tell me a little bit about what goes into the grooming. 
of one of these. I mean, this is put down lovely. And that this took, what is, I mean, what does that take? It depends on the on the coat and the, the amount of coat. The blacks tend to have a lot more coat than some of the other colors. Mm -hmm. um, they should have a nice hard top coat, mm -hmm. very hard jacket like this. She does have puppies, so she was a lot of work to get pulled through all the dead, uh -huh. fuzzy stuff. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, in general, you're looking at a couple hours of preparation. Okay. You do need to, once you get through the puppy fuzz, hold on to this coat, work this coat a little bit. But once you get through that puppy time, it's pretty low maintenance. Um, and it's, you know, a weekly bath. And Great. So they're not too bad. Okay. Faults, DQs? Uh, lacking bone. Lacking bone and bad feet. Bad feet. If you don't have good feet, you're not going to last in the field. Okay. Now it's become very trendy to build straight legs, big bone to, uh, on, the, on the dogs to build up the bone. Okay. So that's why you have to feel. You feel the feet. Lacking in forechest. Okay. The dog was designed to go into heavy brush. Mm -hmm. It can't have bad feet. It has to have the bone to be able to push, and it has to have the forechest to be able to push in, as well as the strong rear to be able to drive it into that. Great. When it's going around the ring, you want the head. It should look exactly like, like this going around as standing. Okay. Terrific. And another way to indicate our bone is look at the tail. Um, and that's another thing to address with the tail. You're seeing a lot of European dogs or dogs even born here that have a tail. It's considered a fault. Um, it's just some of all the parts with the dog. Um, the, ta the standard still says tail docked, so it's obviously preferred. But as you're prioritizing your specimens in the ring, mm -hmm. if there's one that is the best specimen in that ring and has a tail, it should be rewarded. Okay, but right. um, when you're looking at a dock tail, which is what the standard calls for, this is also a good way to help indicate how much bone a dog has. They should. If they have a real thin, fine tail, generally they're pretty thin, fine bones. So this tail should go along with the proportion and everything of the dog, Great. the thickness of it. Terrific. All right, there you have it. It's the English Cocker Spaniel. Some of us call Ingies. So you guys, have a good day. Until next time.